For Game of Thrones fans out there, the fictional world of Westeros might be closer than you think. The Washington Trail Association has compiled a list of areas right here in our own backyard that will make you feel like you're there. Here to tell us more is WTA's Anna Roth. It's so good to see you. Hi, Margaret. Nice this is such you. a good idea. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to spend this much time watching TV, I should probably get outdoors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as well. So we're going to kind of compare fictional places in the show to real life places in Washington where we can all go and, and hike around. Um, what is Dorne like? So Dorne is this beautiful sandy dune area and the equivalent hike that we created in um, our article was um, for the Hanford Reach, which is over in central Washington. It is remarkably similar. You can see on our website, WTA.org, this feature with some side-by-sides of each um, We're looking at it hike. right now. Yeah. And, and Hanford <laughs> Reach even sounds like something that could be in the show. Sure. So it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. It's remarkable. It's also a really good hike um, in the shoulder season or in the winter time when um, it's really snowy or wet over on the Cascades and you just want to dry off a little bit. Yep. Hanford's a good, a good pick. Is this part of kind of the Mediterranean? Mediterranean climate that winds up the middle of the state? Sort of, yeah. It's more like high desert, but that's kind of in Oregon. But sure, yeah, it's that deserty, um, high and dry. Love um, it. Yeah. Okay, so you found an equivalent of Dragonstone. Yes. Oh my gosh. This one's one of my favorites. Um, Steamboat Rock is a beautiful area up in the Grand Coulee part of Washington State, and this hike is just a short little walk, and then you actually do have quite a bit of a climb to get to the top. Like, how, how much is quite <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll say on our website, WTA.org, yes. you can find any hike in Washington. You can also find the elevation gain. This one, I think it's probably close to 150, maybe 200 feet, but it oh, is okay, kind of fine. all at once. I thought it was so, going to be like oh no, no, it's 4,000 feet or something. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's just that you have to do it like whoop to get yeah. right on top. But got once it. you're there, you've got amazing views. It so does look like we can judge dragons. from the list how easy or hard this is. You'll let yeah. us clue us in on that. Okay. So King's Landing, mm -hmm, of course, is much like um, our Kamiak Butte entry, which is uh, way out in the Palouse part of eastern Washington, and it's gorgeous. Rolling hills, um, that checkerboard farmland that you can mm -hmm. see, these big skies and clouds. So pretty. It's really lovely. But no dragons have burned it to ashes, no so dragons. that's good. The only dragons you're going to see are about this big about in the lizard <laughs> category. <laughs> the lizards. Okay, something that is um, analogous to the Reach. Yeah, oh, this is another great one. Um, Twin Sisters Rock, very accessible. It is right off of one of the highways coming out of Walla Walla, and it's really short. The one thing that I do tell oh, folks to think about, yeah, isn't that great? It yeah, just looks you guys exactly have done like such it. a bang up job on this. this yeah, so cool. yeah, we did. I was thrilled about the side by side photos. But those rocks are accessible via about half a mile little stroll right off the highway. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do let folks know is this one is really close to private property, so do know where you're going. Yep. Check WTA.org, get a map, make sure that you're staying on public. Public land. Can you climb on the rocks? It's not recommended. So it's just kind of go look and yeah, see. Yeah, you kind of go to the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Something that looks a lot like the Riverlands. Yes, this one's actually really accessible and it's a little bit closer than the other ones we've been talking about. This is the Old Sock River Trail and it's up north towards Darrington. Um, really beautiful, forested, deep, um, lush, green amazingness. Which really we want. Nice now. <laughs> amazingness. We need some amazingness <laughs> over the summer. The Iron Islands. We actually have something that looks a little like the Iron Islands. Yes. yes. Um, Cape Flattery, way oh, out. It's the furthest northwest point of the contiguous U.S. Mm -hmm. um, it is also an area that I recommend people, again, check our website, WTA.org. You need a special permit for this area because it's managed by the Macaw Tribe, and you want to be sure to respect their management and their right. land. Um, it's a pretty short trail, but it is pretty rugged, so consider that when you head out there. So you have instructions on the website about how to get permission. Is it difficult? You have to plan ahead? What What's involved? No, actually, it's pretty straightforward. You can really just stop in Nia Bay, which is on your way out right. to Cape Flattery, and you can get a permit at the Macaw Museum. And there are a few other businesses in Nia Bay that will sell you a permit. And then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And that's an area lots of people who've lived here for a long time have never been to. So yeah. it's a good trip, yeah. good trip to make. Um, something that's like the Vale of Arran. Yes, the Vale of Arran, so nice. Um, I love this one. Um, it is the Coyote Wall area, which is down in the gorge. And I love this one too, this picture of his just looking at the waterfall. Um, <laughs> One of my favorites, the gorge is a beautiful area, wonderful for wildflowers, wonderful for waterfalls. Um, you really can't go wrong with this spot in the spring. And then the haunted woods. Yeah, this one's definitely the closest, I think, for anybody living in the Seattle area. And it's not haunted, so near as we know. Not haunted. Um, 
Not as far as we know, actually. <laughs> Let us know in a trip report if you exactly. hear about Please, anything. We love feedback. <laughs> but it's great. Um, the Kitsap Peninsula is just right across the water, and Gold Creek, which is the trail that's recommended here, probably not going to be as snowy as it is in this photo, but um, definitely a nice climb. You can lose yourself in a Game of Thrones landscape and then remind yourself where you are, because at the top you can see Puget Sound and Seattle from the very I suddenly top. see people in costumes snowshoeing yeah. through oh, the winter. Oh, highly like recommended that. hiking that in costume. That would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be so as long as you're safe. <laughs> we love to see photos of people hiking in costumes. So if you can do that and report and, and write a trip send report. Them in to, to us and to you. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what you guys do at yeah. your organization and how we can plug in. Sure. Uh, Washington Trails Association is a statewide environmental nonprofit, and we have a vision of trails for everyone forever. So that looks like hikers and anybody who enjoys being outside, engaging, becoming stewards of the outdoors, and feeling empowered to speak up and protect trails and public lands in Washington. Right. Um, there are a few ways that you can get involved. Probably the easiest, especially in relation to this feature, would be to write a trip report about one of these trails that you visit. Mm -hmm. If you want to get your hands dirty, you can volunteer with us, and you can visit WTA.org slash volunteer to do that um, and if you're into advocacy and you want to make sure that our trails are funded for the future please join our advocacy um, email list it's the trail action network and you can find it all at wta.org that's awesome so what is your general opinion about when to get kids out on the trails oh yeah um, i am a big proponent of getting them out whenever you feel like it's going to be fun um, that could mean the snow, if they really like snowshoeing, mm -hmm. if they just want to have a snowball fight, that could be winter. Um, a lot of kids are game for just even a short little park hike. So if To get started. That's yeah. a good idea. You don't have to go out that mm -hmm. far, but get them used to the idea and just don't run out of snacks. That, right. that is my ultimate yeah. mistake as a parent were a few times where we ran out of snacks. Yeah, the snacks are very key to yeah. keeping people happy. It's Whether or not you're a kid. My first rule of life. <laughs> Don't go far from the snack bar. Thank you mm -hmm. so very much.